Hello there friends and welcome for today's pathfinding handset guide we have my very first ever Winter Witch build, you guys requested it, so here it is. This will be a blaster caster fully focused into cold damage. We will not only get to convert any spell in the game into cold, including fire spells, but also stack loads and loads of extra boosts to our cold spell damage. To ensure maximum damage, we are talking about something like higher than 900 area of effect damage, together with, of course, higher than 1000 single target damage. Double that even because you can quicken your spells for 2 casts per round. For this Winter Witch build, we'll be going with Lich for that Ice Queen feeling, and all of the amazing Lich boosts, including the extremely powerful Lich spells and buffs, that can even grant you higher than 1000 hit points easily rechargeable by the way, together with great powers including ones that directly support cold damage, and even debuff the enemies on top of our damage spells. And as always, I'll give you ways to make this build effective even from the early levels, as to get you started into your cold blasting. So without further ado, let us get into our Winter Witch build. Alright, so first let's do a quick review on what Winter Witch actually provides to your character. To qualify for it, you need either the Frost Spirit as a Shaman, or the Winter Patron as a Witch. And that's right, you can actually build your Winter Witch by starting as either the Witch class, and ideally merging with Lich, as I will do for this build. Essentially you'll be an evil High Queen type of character, or go with Shaman, and ideally the way to go is to merge with Angel instead. So this is the choice if you want to build a more Disney princess, magical, frozen, good aligned, winter witch type of character. And by the way, the shaman does have a better spell book by default than witch. Regardless of the path you pick, both can merge with either angel or lich, so they'll be extremely powerful regardless. Now as far as the actual benefits from winter witch, it will continue your full spellcasting progression, together with hexes as well. At level 1 you'll gain Code Specialization, which increases the DC of your Code spells including converted spells into Code, by one with another increase at level 5 and 10. Also grants you a penalty with Fire spells, which doesn't really matter because you'll be converting them into Code. At level 3 you get Freezing Code, which, unlike Code Specialization, this one increases your Caster level instead of DC, by plus 1 at 3 and 2 at 6. The last ability you get is Unearthly Code, which honestly is plain garbage. It's a trap, don't bother picking it, which means you don't really want your Winter Witch to have 8 levels or more, because this will reduce your damage by splitting it, something you don't really need because of how easy it is to fully convert any energy damage into code. To put it simply, do not pick this unless you want to nerf your damage. Now, the Winter Witch Prestige class is kinda underwhelming, there's really no other way to put it. But because you can merge with either Lich or Angel, you'll be amazing regardless. Of course you can also go with Azata for some other spell boosts, but it's not really the same as merging with Lich and Angel which are the top tier of the mythic paths. In any case, for this build I'll be going with Witch. And you have two choices, the normal Witch or the one I'll be picking now, Leyline Guardian. I've never done this archetype before. Essentially it's a spontaneous witch, just like Amber, who is a stigmatized witch. And by the way, you cannot qualify for Winter Witch as stigmatized because you lose the patron. Leyline Guardian is based on intelligence like most witches, and they trade first the familiar and also two hexes for the Conduit Surge ability. This can increase the caster level of your spells, which results in higher duration, but most importantly more damage, especially for the uncapped ones, like Chain Lightning and the Lich spells. At first it's 1d4-1 whenever you use this ability, but at level 8 it will become 1d4 increase, and you can use it a number of times per day equal to 3 plus your Charisma modifier, and only works for a single spell after you use this ability. Now whenever you cast the actual spell boosted by this, you have to make a fortitude save or become staggered. This can be slightly annoying early game, but eventually at around level 7, divine casters can just buff you with freedom of movement, which makes you immune to staggered, thus utterly bypassing this penalty. 
While Leyline Guardian will have delayed spell progression by being a spontaneous caster, especially with Dispute because it will be multiclassing, but honestly, the fact they can cast spells spontaneously is a big advantage because this qualifies us for the very special gear that will provide three spells, both Fire, Ice and Lightning too. The Fire spells through the Red Salamander Ring are the best pick here because Witch doesn't really have a great spell book and you'll be missing on a lot of damage spells. Through the Fire Ring, we'll get them all added for free including Fireball, Controlled Fireball, Hellfire Ray and so on. And I know you're going to say, but they're fire spells, you're a winter witch. Well, yes, but we'll get the ability to convert all of their damage into ice, which will work with the winter witch ice boosts too, very early in the game. This matters because unfortunately, the cold spells are still pretty underwhelming, outside of the latest edition, Winter's Grasp. Now, for race... I would rather go with human. I mean, aren't all famous winter witches, ice queens and snow queens human anyways? Mostly for the extra feat at level 1, because as a blaster caster build, we really need a lot of feats to increase our DC, also to bypass spell resistance, the meta magic feats, there's a lot of stuff you need to get true power. But eventually, you'll end up with some free feats late game, so you can also go with another race if you prefer. For the background, the classic street touching and pickpocket for the bonus tree initiative, which really matters for this character, the faster you can act, the faster you crowd control or debuff enemies through your hexes, or just annihilate them with your cold damage spells. Plus, as a leyline guardian, we won't get the familiar, which can provide extra initiative, so this is a way to make up for that. For ability scores, intelligence is the way to go, 19 is enough at character creation, then I would go for 14 charisma, it can help late game once we become a full lich for extra hit points, but remember it will still provide you with more uses of Conduit Surge. Then 12 Constitution, although this character has a ranged spellcaster, even your hexes have range, you won't really be getting hit much, it's just to be safe. And I would finish with 14 Dexterity, I know some prefer 16, I just don't think the extra point cost is worth it. For skill points, because of our high intelligence, we'll get to specialize into a lot of skills. Ideally, Arcana and World, because they are intelligence-based, together with Use Magic Device and Persuasion, as we have decent charisma. The last skill point is up to you. You can pick Trickery and Stealth, depending on what other skills your party members will cover. Later, you'll also have easy access to Lore, Nature and Religion. I'll just pick Stealth here. Now, for your level 1 feats, this is very important. We want first, spell focus into evocation, so that our spells deal full damage, and most of the damage spells you'll get are evocation. For the second feat, spell specialization into burning hands. I know it's a fire spell, but it's the best area of effect early damage spell in the game. And as early as level 2, we'll fully convert it into cold damage anyways. For the patron, you have to pick winter if you want to be a winter witch. As I said before, the spells you gain are rather poor overall because the cold spells are, to put it simply, underwhelming. The game will keep asking you what you specialize in every single level, just pick Burning Hands until around level 5. This way, our Burning Hands, even as a level 1 witch, will already deal triple damage, as if you were a level 3 caster for 3d4, not counting the Bloodline boosts we'll soon be getting. For your level 1 spells, Please remember that I already have guides for the best arcane spells of all types that you can check to the side here or in the pinned comments down below, so I'll keep it simple for now. Mage Armor is an amazing buff early game, especially for pets and unarmored characters. And well, we have to pick Burning Hands. For Deity, as this build will go Lich, Ergatoa for the bonus dialogue and then Neutral Evil. Now for level 2, we actually want to multi-class with Sorcerer, and cross blood dead because the bloodline benefits will highly increase the power of our build. Yes, this will delay our spellcasting progression because Leyline Guardian is already a spontaneous caster, so even higher of a delay. But look, as a witch, you'll soon have access to hexes, which you can always use to debuff enemies for great effect, meaning you'll always have something to do in battle. Even if you're out of spells, you don't ever need to fight with melee or ranged weapons with this build. And as I said before, the benefits of Leyline getting spells for free to the Red Salamander Ring and so on, they're just too good. Plus, once you merge with Lich, you'll supercharge your spellcasting progression speed anyways. Now, when it comes to your bloodlines, first you want White Dragon, because this will increase the damage of all of your cold spells, including converted ones, by plus one per dice rolled. 
For example, for our burning hands, which deal 3d4 at this level, it would then become 3d4 plus 3. For the bonus feat as a sorcerer, spell penetration is the way to go. I would rather get this early, instead of other boosts to difficulty class, so that we can hit even annoying demons with spell resistance even early game. Now for the second bloodline pick, this is very important, you absolutely want water elemental. Water will grant you a toggable ability that lets you convert the energy damage of any spell type into cold. So now your burning hands will already deal cold damage. For the single spell you'll get as a sorcerer, I would just pick burning hands here. Even with just one caster level, it will still deal 3d4 points of damage and can help quite a lot early game because you'll have double casts of it from both witch and sorcerer. Now for level 3, resume progression into Leyline Guardian. For your level 3 feat, greater spell penetration. And as your first hex, slumber is the way to go. It's pretty much the best hex to have early game, even for some of the mid game too. Essentially, you can put any enemy into sleep, so long as they aren't immune to mind affecting, demons aren't, most enemies aren't. This has permanent uses like most hexes, which means you can cast it whenever you want against any enemy. It's especially useful for ambushing enemies out of battle. So you can then put two enemies to sleep in just a single round. At level 4, increase intelligence, which is also what you want to increase on all of the other levels, for as many spell slots and difficulty class as possible. As you increase your intelligence, you'll get more skill points. You can put them anywhere you want. I'll go for perception now, because it has become a class skill for us. For another level 1 spell, I would just pick your light wounds here. It can help early game, and as a spontaneous caster, you'll have access to it on demand. For level 5, instead of greater spell focus, we want elemental focus, which has the same effect, except instead of a spell school, it only works for spells of certain energy types, and we want code. For the second hex, Evil Eye is the way to go. It's very versatile, can reduce the enemy's saving throws, armor class, attack rolls, and soon at level 8, the penalty will become minus 4, which is massive, because even if the enemy saves against this, they'll still be hit by the effect for one round, which is more than enough. Now at last we can pick one of the best newly added code spells to the game, Winter's Grasp, which is essentially Ice Grease except even better. And please note that I've already covered the new spells in this guide you can check here. Because it is Conjuration, it's also why we went for Elemental Focus instead of Spell Focus, because then we would have to pick a vocation. For another level 1 spell at 6, Unbreakable Heart to remove Confusion on Demand, one of the most annoying crowd control effects. Then for another level 2 spell, you have a few choices. You can pick Glitter Dust here, which also works as crowd control for enemies that are immune to the knockdown from Winter's Grasp. But since you are a cold caster, Winter Witch, I imagine you want to have fun just spamming Winter's Grasp anyways. I would just pick False Life here, this is even better as a Lich later on, and can provide a nice layer of defense. At level 7, go with meta magic and bolster spell. This will serve as a way of increasing our spell damage, even with early spells like Burning Hand, which will then be slotted on level 2 spells for more casts, so it can also provide spellbook flexibility. For another hex, Protective Luck, which can really help your tanks. Of course, you can also pick this as early as level 2, assuming you were playing on Unfair and want your tanks to be at maximum efficiency. Now at this point, level 7, because you'll get access to level 3 spells, including Fireball for free through the Red Salamander Wing, stop specializing into Burning Hands and go for Fireball instead, for even higher damage. For your level 3 spells, honestly, you'll just be spamming your Cold Ball anyways. So, you can pick anything you want here, including Heroism, but I would rather leave this for other casters. Remove Curse can help as a spontaneous caster. Now, at this point, level 8, you can already become a Winter Witch. I would delay it for just a little bit longer, however, because there are a lot of benefits from becoming a level 8, Leylarn Guardian. We will of course get the upgrade to Conduit Surge, but also stronger effects on Evil Eye and higher duration on Protective Luck. And remember to keep specializing into Fireball from now onwards. For another level 1 spell, Strand of the Tangle Knot can help avoid any hits you might have taken otherwise. And then you can go for Bone Fists, unless you have other casters that can cast it, like Camellia or a cleric, to buff your party members AC and natural attacks, even find traps too because we do have high perception with this build. Honestly, you'll just be using Winter's Grasp or Bolstered Burning Hands for this level. The same for level 3 spells, you can pick anything here. I would go for Vampiric Touch because it has nice synergy with Lich, and by the way, you can just cast this on an ally for the extra boost to your hit points and heal them afterwards. 
You don't have to get close to the enemy. Level 8 will be our last level of Leyline Guardian. And be sure to pick Greater Elemental Focus into Code now. Because you'll have level 4 spells at this point, if you prefer to use Controlled Fireball, choose to specialize into it instead. I would rather the normal Fireball because we can then apply the Bolster, Meta Magic for higher damage as a level 4 spell. For your first actual level 4 spells, because you'll just be using what I've mentioned, I would just grab Greater False Life. Ice Storm is actually garbage, there's no other way to put it. Now is when I would start progression into Winter Witch. Level 10. For another level 2 spell, you can pick anything, once again. The same for level 3. Anything as an extra level 4 spell too. Death Ward can help as a spontaneous caster, so you'll always have it on demand whenever you encounter undead enemies to prevent level drain. Also do note that at this point, level 10, you'll be merging with Lich at mythic level 3, which means you'll get a massive boost to spellcasting, so you'll go from level 4 to level 6 spells right at once, including getting access to all of the powerful Lich spells. I know it says Lore Master in the screen here, just ignore it, we'll be picking it later. For level 11, greater spell focus into evocation, so now we have double boosts to our cold spells, from both elemental focus and spell focus. For another hex, I would go with Fortune, it lasts 2 rounds, which is enough to prep up before the toughest of battles. Any level 5 spell here because the Lich level 5 spells are simply way better. I'm picking Baleful Polymorph here just because it's very thematic for a Witch, although I never use it. Any other level 2 spell. As a Lich, as you increase your Mythic ranks past 3, you'll be getting more and more spells known, so this character can end up with more than enough spells. You'll have a lot more spell picks than what I'm showing here during normal progression. Just remember that as a level 4 spell, once you reach around level 12, it's nice to pick Dimension Door, because it can help you access a lot of secret areas during chapter 4. For level 13, you can pick Improved Initiative here, but I would rather get Heightened Spell. Heightened can provide even more spellbook flexibility when combined with Bolster. For another hex, Keko is the way to go. This is kinda cheesy because you can then extend both Protective Luck and fortune hacks, which we picked before, by, well, a number of rounds equal to only your patience when it comes to spamming Kekko. For your level 6 spells, honestly the ones here are all pretty poor. And they don't matter because you already have the Lich level 6 spells, but most importantly, Chain Lightning from the Stormlord Bracers. And Chain Lightning is a rare normal spell in that it is uncapped. I know it says maximum damage here, it's lying, it's uncapped, and I do hope it stays that way, because it's one of the only normal spells that can compete with mythic spells outside of Hellfire Ray. Essentially with this build you can hit for even higher than 35 d6 full coat damage. It really is that good, and the spell you want to be spamming from now onwards for enemy packs. Plus at this point we also get Hellfire Ray, the ultimate single target damage spell, which can easily one-shot most enemies in the game, considering all of the boosts we have to extra spell damage. In our case it will do full cold damage, so it's more like Kokaitas Ray, I'm pretty sure the Frozen Hell Pathfinder is called Kokaitas. Anyways, like I said, you can pick any level 6 spell here, including the classic Cone of Code, but it's kinda outclassed by Chain Lightning, I'm afraid. I suppose if you want to ever melee with your Winter Witch, Transformation can help. At least it does something unique unlike these other spells here. Like I said, pick any normal spells now. And don't bother with greater dispel magic because liches have a much more powerful dispel. Now level 6 will be our last level of Winter Witch. Remember, as I said at the beginning, you really do not want to advance to 8. Because a nerfly cold will nerf your damage. And as far as 7, it doesn't matter because both Freezing Cold and Cold Specialization will be close to maximum power at 6. For level 15, it's very important that you pick Skill Focus into either Arcana or World, so that we can qualify for the Lore Master Prestige class. You can pick any other Witch Hex now. I'll be going with Ice Plant just because it's thematic for this build. The main reason I didn't pick it before is because, look, this is just for tanking and our character is ranged. Although, if you don't have a Scald party member, you can also pick Beast's Gift, which will provide an extra bite attack for all of your party. For level 7 spells, there's actually some great normal picks here. Legendary Proportions is one of the best buffs in the game. It is true that this doesn't work on Undead, 
But even as a Lich, the most optimal way to go is with a party of mostly living characters. Of course, if you already have someone else that can cast it, like Amelia, you don't need it. So you have more slots for blasting. In which case, you can actually pick Chain Lightning. You can have it both at level 6 from the Stormlord Bracers and level 7 now from Witch Progression. The Harm spell can also help when it comes to healing or allies, including undead ones and even living ones boosted by the Lich's spells. Now, level 16 is when I would enter into Lore Master. We already have the best bonuses from both Leyline and Winter Witch, and Lore Master can provide us with a lot of extra versatility. For the first secret, Combat Feet and Shatter Defenses. This way you bypass the annoying requirements, and Shatter can be quite useful for this build, because the Hellfire Ray spell, for example, can hit the enemy's flat-footed AC together with Touch AC, which is double the AC penalty. Also a reason why I don't bother with point blank and precise shot, we don't really have the space with this build. For another level 7 spell, just pick harm for healing. For level 17, improved critical into ray. By this point your hellfire ray will already be at maximum power because of the lich boosts, even with our delayed spell casting from sorcerer and leyland guardian. And essentially if you critical you get even more damage. But even without criticals, your Kokaitis Ray will still one-shot pretty much almost anything. Now, for your level 8 normal spells, they kinda don't matter too. The Lich ones and the meta magic boosted spells like Chain Lightning are way better. Just pick Frightful Aspect here. For your second secret at 18, this can go in a number of different ways. You can, for example, steal a spell from any class, because at this point, you already have access to level 9 spells from the Lich Merge. You might even consider picking the Mass version of Icy Prison as a level 9 spell from the Wizard spellbook. Quite thematic, just not really as useful as blasting the enemies with Cold Chain Lightning, as always. Or you can grab a bonus feat and even a Rogue Talent. Because we almost have all of the best spells already, something you can do if you want higher Hellfire Ray damage is pick Sense Vitals, which will add sneak attack damage for free to you. Amusingly enough, it seems like you can still pick the special Trickster Critical Feats through Lore Master, but I'm pretty sure this was supposed to have been patched out already, which is why I won't be picking them. There's also Polar Ray, but you can get it for free through a ring, and it's just garbage compared to Hellfire Ray. Sea Mantle can provide a lot of extra armor class, but we don't really need it. I'll just keep it simple and pick Sense Vitals, but like I said, you have a lot of choices, just pick what you prefer. You can also pick anything as other level 8 spells. Or level 19, Improved Initiative. Or you can delay Heightened Spell for now and pick Improved Initiative at 3rd thing. For your normal level 9 spells, Mind Blank Communal is the must have here, because it will let your characters bypass True Sin from enemies, so that your concealment effects will be at full power. For your last Lore Master's Secret at 20, once again you can pick anything you want. If you want more attack bonus and melee damage for your Winter Witch, you can go for Divine Power from the Cleric list. I'll just keep it simple and go for a rogue secret. Of course, you can pick another feat, but I would rather a talent and get the familiar, because I think it's kind of sad that we don't get a familiar as a Leilarn Guardian, and then hair for the bonus initiative. But as I said, it's not necessary. Go with anything you want. For your last level 9 spell, although as you increase mythic ranks as a lich, you'll get a lot more. Well, pick anything you want. Polar Midnight is kind of garbage, I'm afraid, but it is a code thematic spell. Heroic Invocation I would rather leave for Darren. Foresight can provide nice bonus to armor class for tanks. Alright, now let us cover Mythic Progression for our Winter Witch Lich. For the first Ascension ability, Bit of Fun can help because of the extra skill boost, as this character will have loss of skills because of their high intelligence. On the other hand, if you want more healing close to the heavens, can be nice too. I know you'll become undead, for Undead Affinity, but that takes a while. For the beginning of the game, at least for Chapter 2 and some of Chapter 3, it can be useful. Now, as far as Mythic Level 1, it's very simple. We want Ascended Element into Code. So now all of our Code spells, including Converted spells into Code, will do full damage no matter the enemy we're facing, if it's an Unfair, if it's a Demon Lord, it doesn't matter. They'll take full damage. For Mythic Level 2, as with any full caster, especially the Blasters, because we really need our spell slots to spam, more damage spells, extra mythic, and you want to get started into the Abundant Casting line of mythic abilities. For Mythic 3, improve the Abundant Casting because at this point you'll be merging with Lich for even faster spell access. Be sure to choose Mythic Spellbook Witch. 
For the skeleton champion, I usually go with Marksman. For this build, I decided to do something different because we are a spellcaster. So I went for the Executioner. You can just give it a rich weapon, right? So it attacks from safety. But as a merged lich, you have a lot of spells for healing your undead ally to full. For the first lich power, you have two choices. The most thematic one of them all is Eclipse Chew. Whenever you activate it, any enemy affected by your spell, including area of effect ones, will have to make a fortitude saving throw with pretty decent DC, or become both blinded, suffer additional cold damage, and here's the best part, become vulnerable to both cold and negative energy. Vulnerability means they'll take an extra 50% damage from our cold spells. Negative energy too, since we are a lich. So quite thematic and quite fun. The only downside is this has somewhat limited uses. You can only use it 3 rounds per rest. Each time you activate it, it will last for 1 round, so 6 seconds. But the benefits are more than worth it. On the other hand, you can already go for Withering Life. All of your spells will drain all of the enemy's physical scores by 1 or mental, depending on what you pick. The main advantage over Eclipse 2 is that this is a passive, so it will always work, no matter how many spells you cast with it. It can stack, and amusingly enough, for spells that hit the enemies multiple times, like Hellfire Ray or even Magic Missile, you can drain the enemies of a lot of stats very fast. So the choice is up to you. The one you don't pick now, you'll be getting at Mythic 6. I'll be going with Eclipse 2 first. Some bosses are immune to ability damage, which is kind of annoying. Not to Eclipse 2, though. For Mythic 4, Extra Mythic, and the last, Abundant Casting. For the first Skeleton Upgrade, Fighter is still the way to go. Then as a bonus combat feat, you might as well pick Outflank, which is always useful for melee characters, and our Skeleton Executioner <laughs> will be at melee. Sadly for weapon focus, it seems like they only have the simple weapons here. I think it's bugged. So nothing you pick here will matter. <laughs> Let's go with Tentacles. Skelly Tentacles. And then weapon training into Pole Arms. Or if you prefer Falchions, but they aren't rich weapons, Heavy Blades. For Mythic level 5, we want a second Bloodline, more like a third because you we went with Cross Blooded Sorcerer. This time, Silver Dragon. Just like the White Dragon, it will increase the damage of your cold spells even further. Starting from Mythic 6, you have a few different ways of progressing your character. You can get Extra Mythic and then go for both Enduring and Greater Enduring spells. If you want your buffs to have maximum 24 hours duration, I don't think Mythic Spell Penetration is needed because we have a high boost to caster level from Lich. You can of course pick Mythic Spell Focus and Evocation, but it's just a plus one to the DC. I would actually, for this build, School Mastery into Evocation because it will increase the damage of our Cold Chain Lightning even further. As I've mentioned before, it's uncapped. And you can potentially also use Expanded Arsenal into Necromancy, so the Necromancy gets our Evocation boosts. I just don't think it's needed because, look, the Lich spells, most of them anyways, they still do their most important effects, even if the enemy saves. For the second Lich power, Withering Life, or Eclipse 2, depending on what you picked before. For Mythic 7, Greater Enduring, if you picked it before. Or, in my case, Favored Meta Magic Bolstered, because now we'll be able to bolster our spells without having to increase the level. For Mythic 8, Sorcerer's Reflex, to cast our first spell as a quick action. You can also pick this at Mythic 6 if you prefer. For the second skeleton upgrade, you can go with anything you want, including Cleric for some self buffs. But the same for Inquisitor and Magus. For Mythic level 9, I'll grab Last Stand just in case. I think it's really cool for a Lich to never die. The last Lich power is up to you. I'll pick Fear Control just because of how versatile it is overall and can help you hit with your Hellfire Race. And amusingly enough, the extra bonus to damage will also apply to your spells. You can also get Deadly Magic, but at this point you can get it for free from your Phylactery. As far as Mythic 10, you can truly grab anything you want, including Mythic Spell Focus or Expanded Arsenal, or Mythic Improved Initiative. Alright, now let's discover gear for our Winter Witch Ice Queen Lich. For the amulet, the new best item for Blaster Casters is the legacy of the last Aslanti Talisman. It has a lot of unique effects, but the best one for our build is the third effect. All of our elemental spells, including cold, will deal an additional 2 points of damage per dice rolled, and this will stack with our dragon bloodlines too, and your cold spells will also get a plus 2 boost to their DC. 
Brawling twice for initiative can also help our build go first, to easily delete enemies before they can react. You can find this amulet from Obrig's last quest at chapter 5, then just show it to the storyteller so he can turn it into a talisman, which means you do require the shifter DLC. For armor, just settle for Haramakis, I have divine guidance here for the nice bonus to all saving throws, but eventually as a leech you can easily make your character immune to almost all crowd control and debuffing effects. And there's also deadly race for a boost to your ranged attack rolls, which isn't really needed as a leech. Now the best robe for a cold focused caster is elemental imbuement. Whenever you suffer elemental damage, the next spell cast by you of the same type will receive a boost equal to plus 2 per dice rolled, just like the legacy of the last Aslanti talisman and our double dragon bloodlines, they will all stack together. There is actually a very easy way to always proc these robes. You can get them at Winter Sun, by the way. In any case, all you need is to have another character equipped with the White Dragon Breastplate. This item has a cold aura that will damage anyone, including allies, within 5 feet of the wearer for 2d6 points of cold damage, which you can and should easily become immune to as a Winter Witch by just casting the Resist Energy Communal spell together with Protection from Energy Cold. The range is pretty short, just 5 feet, so you'll want both your Winter Witch and the character equipped with this should be very close together at the start of battle at least. Just go to the battle formation, then have the character equipped with the armor, my scald here, put them on top of your Winter Witch, so that whenever you move, you end up close to one another. Now just initiate battle, wait one second, and there we go, we already took the cold damage, thus receiving the bonus from the elemental imbuement robes which is this other plus 72 here. For belts, just go with belts that enhance your dexterity and or constitution at first, but after you become a full lich and lose your constitution score, belts that enhance both strength and dexterity, assuming you ever want to melee. For gloves, there isn't really anything special unlike for firecasters, I just have to twist the temptation here because while you won't cast enchantment spells, Whenever you strike any enemy with a spell for the first time with these gloves, they'll suffer a minus 2 penalty to will, which has direct synergy with some of the lich spells that target will, like the amazing negative eruption. For boots, you can always go with Ronak Sacrifice for higher AC, although it doesn't matter for this character, and there's always the boots of magical world, so that whenever you kill an enemy, your next spell will be cast as if quickened. Just remember you have a limit of 1 quickened spell per round. For headbands, at first ones that increase intelligence, later intelligence and charisma. Darkness caress being the best one. Glasses don't really matter, I just settled for piercing gaze here, at least you can benefit from the bonus to persuasion. For cloaks, the cloak of carnage found at chapter 3 can highly increase the DC of your evocation spells by plus 2, but as a lich you might also consider the lich special mythic cloak to increase the power of your undead allies. For rings, Triumphant Advance is only here because I think it's main character worthy, plus the extra bonus of Shumoral can help you hit enemies with your Hellfire Race. For the second ring we have Red Salamander here because it will grant us an amazing amount of free fire spells, which will convert into code of course. Amazing for the early and mid game like Fireball, Controlled Fireball, even something like Firestorm later on. Witches cannot learn any of these spells by normal progression. Remember that when applying metamagic to a spell granted by this ring, for example, Bolster Fireball here, even if you want to equip the ring, you'll still retain access to the metamagic spell, which can help a lot in case you want to go with another ring later on. For bracers, the new best bracers for blaster casters are the Scorching Bracers, which just like the Cloak of Carnage, increase the DC of your evocation spells by plus 2 even lets you cast Scorching Ray, which we don't get as a witch. You can find this from Obrick's Chapter 3 quest by buying it from a merchant there. As a lich, of course, later you can equip your Phylactery as a Bracer for the deadly magic ability. Now let's talk about weapons and quick slots, and when it comes to weapons, we have very important items here. First, the new OP staff. Well, not really new, it's just that I've slept on this staff for a long time. The Plague of Madness. This has an extremely powerful effect of applying both Empower and Maximize spell metamagic feats for free to your spells cast. For maximum damage, by the way, 
the closest you have is the Grandmaster's Rod, which is super late game only. Plague of Madness can be found right at Chapter 3, from the Wicked Dope Crusade Relic, by turning it into a staff. Now, here's how this staff works. Whenever you cast the same spell three times in a row, your next spell will become both empowered and maximized. It might seem annoying to get this effect, but it's actually very easy through this neat little tip. What you want to do is select a cantrip, any cantrip like buffs such as resistance, then cast it three times on your character. It has to be the same cantrip. So just cast resistance three times, and that's it. The next actual damage spell you cast, like Chain Lightning, will become boosted by this staff. And get this, you can even change the Plague of Madness staff after casting the cantrip three times into something else, like Fiery Spell Weaver for higher damage, and still retain the maximize and empower benefit. Because of how extremely easy it is to cast any cantrip three times before battle starts, they are infinite uses after all, you essentially get free empower and maximize to any spell once per battle. It really is that amazing. As I've mentioned, we also have other nice staffs. Fiery Spell Weaver will increase the caster level of any of your spells, no matter the school. Great for the Lich spells which are uncapped, and also Chain Lightning for the same purpose. You also have the Quarter Staff of the War Mage for the huge bonus to DC plus 2 of all spells, and to Spell Penetration as well. Remember, after using Plague of Madness, you can swap it to another staff. But for the next battle, if you want to benefit from Plague of Madness again, equip it once more before casting the cantrip three times, and repeat. As far as quick slots, it's mostly about meta magic rods to further increase our damage, especially when you combine it with the Plague of Madness, so you get even more uses out of them. Greater Quicken, for example, is amazing, but not that needed once you get Sorcerer's Reflex. Grandmasters, of course, so that we have Empower and Maximize for two spells in a row, one with Plague and the other through the Rod. And extend meta magic rods just to increase the duration of your buffs, including powerful lich ones like Eyes of the Bulldog for the level drain aura. The skeletal finger is quite handy to have too because it has unique effects for a lich character. And of course, you can always give your Ice Queen a pet through the Triceratops statuette. Well, alright, friends, so this was it for my Winter Witch Snow Queen build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like and subscribe, and also consider becoming a channel member, especially if you want to request new builds just for you. Your support is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.